Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're joining from. And thank you for listening to this episode of CPA Review and More with your host, Phil Yeager. I'm your producer and director here at the Yeager Studios, Rob Medford, and together we are bringing you the number one podcast for CPAs and CPA candidates. If you're new to the show, I'd like to be the first to thank you for checking us out. We're excited to have you as part of our listenership. If you're here because you've already heard our show and you're a continued listener, we thank you for the ongoing support. It's always greatly appreciated. If you're in the market for a CPA review course or simply want to know more about what Jaeger CPA Review has to offer, check out our website at JaegerCPAReview.com or call our office and we'll answer any questions you might have. The link and telephone number will be in the description of this episode. Here at Team Jaeger, we're excited to tell you about our new Jaeger CPA Review subscription format. It's the same great Jaeger CPA review course that you know and love on an all new month to month, no long term commitment subscription format. But without any further delay, I'm going to pass the microphone on over to your host, Phil Jaeger. Good evening, everyone. This is Phil Jaeger, and welcome to our webinar tonight for September 26. I am here with Ron. Ron, I always have trouble with your last name. Ron Permadrosa. He's going to change his name soon just to make my life easier. And I am Phil Yeager, and we're with the Yeager CPA Review, and we're here to make your life a little better because we're going to give you some successful strategy for exams. Now, before we go into this, I received an email today, all right, from the AICPA examination, and it's saying, we don't anticipate any new blueprints this year that would impact the first or second quarter of 2020. We'll publish the next updated blueprints as early as April 1st of 2020, but any changes would not be directly related, all right? So that's it. You don't have to worry about any changes in the blueprints. Uh, I did have a call with a young lady before the, po- before the, the podcast or webinar, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and interestingly enough, she is studying from another company's books and she has actually failed. This is one of these people I offered to talk to who are not students of our course. And she took auditing and failed it. And then she got back this diagnostic report and she said, well, I was weaker in this area, but I don't know exactly what's under this area. So I said, well, don't you have the blueprints? And she says, no, uh, the course really didn't mention it. So, um, Anyway, I said, well, go to the AICPA.org website, all right, and type in the thing that says blueprints for the auditing, all right, and it'll show you exactly what those tasks are under the areas you're weaker on. So, and now she's studying for financial. She's taking October 6th. And once again, been studying with this course without the blueprints. I had Mike Decker on, Vice President of Examinations, about two weeks ago on my podcast, and I asked him this question. I said, Mike, if someone calls you and asks you what to study for the exam, what would you tell him? And the answer was the blueprints, the blueprints. If you don't know what the blueprints are by now, all right, you've been living under a rock for the past two years, okay? The blueprints is what they're going to test you on. You must have a course that integrates those blueprints in the text, not just you a copy of them, all right? So keep that in mind. So anyway, I know a lot of you just got your grades again, another release date. And of course, Ron and I are going to talk about this, Uh, you know, some people pass, some people fail. It's, it's a contest. That's really what it is. So let's talk about the times, first of all, that we failed, right, Ron? I fa- yeah, I failed yeah, two failed. parts. Yes. We, we both failed the first time. We really did. And uh, I remember getting the results, and Ron's going to tell you when he got his results. Now, remember, we took the paper and pencil exam, but it was still the CPA exam, right, Ron? Oh, yes. All right. So tell me how it was. You went to the mailbox, and it said what, Ron? Phil? Well, I took it with five other people at the same time in my office. You know, I didn't know how they had done it. So I went to the mailbox. I got my paper with the grades on it. And I saw I had passed the first two parts. And then I looked at the last two. And my heart kind of sunk. But I said, you know, I passed two out of four. I'm pretty happy with myself. Well, I went to the office, Phil. And the other four people passed all four parts. Okay. So 
I was devastated, to be honest, Phil. And uh, we had in the office a room with no windows in it. It kind of hid in there for, you, for a few days and uh, gathered my thoughts, uh, redid my strategy on what I need to study. And by the way, Phil, in those days, right, we had an idea of where we were strong or where we were weak. And there were no blueprints, pr- uh, right, Phil? It was just a big book that we studied. Yeah, I think and they I, had the content specification. Then they, they told us the yeah, ideas. No, yeah, there but, no content. but very broadly. Yeah, very, okay, very broadly. broadly. Yeah, like business yes. combinations, that type. Yeah, that type of thing. And what I did, Phil, for the next six months is really redoubled my study efforts, doubled my focus and concentration on it, and resolved to myself that I was going to pass the exam. And, uh, you know, fortunately I did, and I think it helped form, helped me with my business career, developing that fortitude to accept, um, you know, a little bit of failure or a little bit of disappointment, let's call it, okay? And then, Phil, the greatest feeling in the world, right? We agree, was getting that second set of grades, passing that exam. It was just wonderful. It was like this big rock lifted over my shoulder. So maybe you can also share your story, too. Well, very quickly, uh, when I went to that envelope, I only passed one part. So I had to go back and retake all four parts. And I only passed business law. And back then, you'd go look at your exam. I went to the Board of Accountancy and looked at my exam, you know, what they graded, what they had taken off. And uh, there was a question worth uh, 10 points. It was a uh, auditing question because I got a 69 in auditing. Back then, it was 69 or 75. Correct. So I looked at this auditing essay I wrote. And I compared it, they showed me the unofficial answer, not an official one, the unofficial answer. And I looked at it and I wrote down every one they had just about. And they only gave me, they only gave me two points. I only had one part that I had passed. And then when I went to the board of accountancy and I looked at, I had basically all of that essay question, right? And they only gave me two out of 10. And if they had given me what I really deserved, I would have passed two parts. So actually it was a snowy day, very depressing I called a friend of mine uh, and I said, I got the results. I only, I I can't take this. It really kills my ego. All right. I feel like tearing my heart out. And I remember he said to me, Phil, look, they just made you director of accounting at Anne Arundel Community, right? Hey, you got to be a CPA. You're teaching students there and telling them about the CPA exam. All right. You'll have more credibility. So anyway, I said, you know, I will go back. And by the way, this gentleman, he's to this day, I remember he said, Phil, you don't go back. You're going to regret it. So I went back and for some reason, I got the results and I passed all four parts the next time, all right? And after I got the smelling salts to wake me up from the uh, surprise, uh, you know, I said to myself, well, I'm so glad I did this. And actually, I know today it was a good reason because the opportunities that Ron and I got from this was, you know, being able to teach CPA review, being able to teach university, be able to work in accounting, all right? You have different things you can come across during your lifetime. So why not be prepared in advance for it, correct? And what you do is you don't quit, all right? If you quit, it's a mistake. Ron, uh, you know, you get a lot of uh, questions uh, called to you for auditing, right? Auditing BBC? Yes. Uh, And what do you do with them uh, when they call you as far as uh, what do you tell them to do if they're not passing it? Yeah. So what I do, Phil, is I sit down with them on that diagnostic report, Phil, which shows them some of their weak areas aligned to the blueprint. And what I start to do with them is to go through those areas. Okay. First, I tell them to review those areas again in whatever CPA recourse material that they're And then I say, let's get together on the next call and I'm going to quiz you and go through with you the main there to make sure that you understand those concepts, which were identified in your report exam where you were deemed to be weak. For example, statistical testing and auditing or critical audit area, right? That's a very hot new topic. And the auditing area is the auditor's responsibility to critical audit areas to the audit committee and all report and the audit reports and these type of things. And I really focus on them, Phil, with those, where those weak areas. And I also press them and say, listen, there's no way to know all the material required. So where do you honestly, you don't understand or you're weak, you know, be honest, okay? Because I want to help you uh, strengthen your, your resolve in that area, strengthen your knowledge, so that when you take the exam, you're able to, you know, to address that. And so I do that, Phil. And the other thing which we talk a lot about, Phil, as you know, is your exam-taking strategy. Did you complete, did you do every simulation? You know, did you manage your time effectively? And of course, if a candidate tells me I didn't get to the last two sims, I say, well, you know, it's going to be very hard. I mean, if you're lucky and one of the sims didn't count, but 
probably both of the Sims counted. And that major reason for you, in that case, let's talk about the strategy. You're managing your time, the clock that you take. The so that's the way I go about it, Phil. Auditing and FARs, as you know, are my specialty areas, most areas of FARs. And I really try to work with the candidate to get them over the areas they feel they're and you're pretty knowledgeable in the BEC areas, aren't you? Yes, also in BEC, yes. You know, one more thing I also try to do is put it into a realistic context for them. You know, if they don't understand a concept in auditing, I say, you know, you're, you're an assistant or an auditor, you're out there doing an audit, how would you approach that issue? You know, of, of FOB shipping, FOB, those type of things. What do they mean to the recording transaction? And I try to put it into a realistic context for them, and hopefully they can remember it then. And uh, by the way, it's best to take financial accounting before auditing, because in auditing, they ask a lot of, for example, this young lady said she failed auditing because they asked the equity method of showing an investment, and she never heard of that. And uh, that's taught in financial accounting. Well, not in her financial accounting, but she didn't study for financial before. She took auditing first before financial. Take financial. There's all your gap rules, all right? And then in auditing, they're going to ask you gap all over again in different ways. So it's a good idea to do financial first. All right. Now, a lot of you are taking the exam. I think the cutoff period is about what? October 10th is the last time run? Yes, that's right. All right. So what do you do between now and then? I mean, we're running out of time. Well, the first thing I would recommend, Ron, tell me if you agree with me. I would say if your course doesn't go over the blueprint, all right, you got to print out a copy of the blueprint. Yes. All right. And read tasks, just read it and say, all right, now uh, they're asking me, I should know the, for example, inventory, LIFO, FIFO, average cost. All right. I have to do the journal entries. They say prepare journal entries. And then they say, how do you value inventory at the lower, or how do you value inventory under those methods? Well, you know, they're telling you what you have to know. Now, of course, if you don't know that and you don't have a course that told you about those areas, all right. Yeah. I mean, it's a way of showing you what you should know. All right. But, you know, at a minimum, you should go through those just to make sure you could explain that to me. I would say to you, all right, do you know that FIFO low, LIFO average cost? How do you value the inventory on each method? All right. Now, you can't tell yourself how to do that. Then you really don't know that area. And that's true with everything on every blueprint, whether you're taking financial. Remember, there's a blueprint for each part. Review the blueprints before you go in there just to make sure you've covered those blueprints. Now, are you going to remember all of it, Ron? No. Impossible, Phil. I'm sorry. Very sorry to say. But of course, there'll be some areas. I mean, students have told me they always have questions on business combination. All right. Now, business consolidation. All right. Go look at the blueprints. You know what you have to know? You have to know the intercompany eliminations and adjustments. Yep. All right. You have to know how to calculate the minority or non controlling interest. Yes. All right. That's one of the blueprints. And the day of the big business combination consolidation worksheet is over. They're not yeah. going to have you prepare. They might give you a worksheet. They'll show you a worksheet of a company and they'll show you different journal entries. And they may say to you, all right, what is the amount they eliminated for intercompany sales and cost of sales? So you got to look at that worksheet. Now it's a machine graded exam. So you go to the Prometrics and they'll have, for example, they'll have answers A, B, C, D, E, F, and they'll put amounts in there. So therefore, if your intercompany elimination is a debit to sales for 7,000, and a credit to cost of sales for 7000 they may ask you the account. Now, the account will be represented by some type of letter, A through something, all right? The amounts will also have letters. So therefore, this way, you're going to answer, you're going to put a letter, and they're going to scan that. That's how they grade it now. So they really don't want to have graders so much anymore because they have a lot of trouble getting graders. So, you know, go through the blueprints last minute. Financial, reg, they do an excellent job uh, explaining this stuff. Uh, Ron and I have discussed this with auditing. Uh, as the blueprint? Yeah, I think it's very descriptive in general, Phil. I think it's laid out very, you know, very well and um, sort of it's in a very logical way, I'd say, okay? And again, Phil, we have to emphasize to the candidates on this call, this is for assistant auditors or senior auditors. This is not partner auditing type questions, right, Phil? I mean, it's right. for people in the field doing what we call bread and butter, right? type auditing work on, you know, reconciling a cash account, reconciling physical inventory from the books, right, to the physical inventory. And this is really basic bread and butter accounting uh, auditing material or auditing type tasks that are done at the highest level 
fill a senior. Uh, I think it's a, they had said that now they're testing that uh, for someone who has maybe two years of public. Yeah. But don't be afraid of that. You can have absolutely no public accounting experience and still pass the auditing if you follow the blueprints. That's yes. it. Follow yeah. that. And so I want to emphasize the link to FARS again. Okay. That's very important. Auditing. When you look at the SIMS and our materials, you can see the automatic link to FAR, okay? The FOB, the cutoffs, the accruals, all these things you study for in FARs are then tested from an office. I'm sorry, where do you find that? Uh, you said a link? In, in our SIMS, in our SIMS. In our okay? SIMS, we have examples of that? Is that a great examples of okay. that, all right. And, and you also, can see that link, it's so important. And also, the AICPA on their website, they have some simulations for each yes. one of the parts. They really, yes. so look at those. Those are good to look at. And you get them by going to AICPA.org, all right? Search, you put in uh, auditing simulation. It'll take you there. Look at yep. them, if you can do them, all right? You get an opportunity to play around with the Prometric Center computer site. That's what you have to know when you go in there. You don't want to start learning how to do use the computer before you go in there, all right? Uh, how about the BEC? Are they pretty good at, as far as explaining stuff on the BEC? Yeah, that one I would say is even, you know, auditing is kind of broad, as you can imagine, Phil, because that's by nature, audit is a little bit broad. But BEC is very specific, okay? Especially in the finance-related area, the IT-related area, cost accounting type subjects, which I teach that also um, at various universities. There it's very specific, Phil. And again, like you just explained, all of you candidates, before you take the exam, should be looking at these blueprints and honestly saying to yourself, you know, I can do standard costs. I understand how to do standard cost calculation. I understand how to do process. Well, I may not know weighted average and FIFO very well, but maybe that's something I need to look at with regard to process, for example. So very specifically. In when that. people call you that they've t- gotten their results on BEC, all right, is there any areas they, you know, you could say most of them are having trouble on? IT, I would say, Phil. Okay. In IT, or unless they have some business experience in IT, either in their jobs or, you know, uh, in some type of business role, they've had some in IT. That is an area that uh, troubles a lot of students. And, and then the really deep finance type, okay, uh, you know, capital markets, you know, foreign exchange, you know, a lot of students have come to me a little bit troubled about foreign exchange. Of course, if you have ex- traveling and have foreign, it's not so difficult. But if you haven't had any experience, they have some trouble. What so, about auditing? Is there consistently a subject in there they have trouble with? Statistical testing, for sure. That's it? Statistical, and again, IT, Phil, okay? Again, if they have experience in IT, they do okay. But if they don't, there's a lot of words in there, as we know, right, Phil? Terminology, cloud computing, all the things that are happening these days. And the AICPA is maturely, right, expanding the testing more and more into IT-related areas as the uh, accounting and auditing field is changing. So that's another area that I hear yeah, from a lot of students. because it's changing. I would yes. get the certification now before it gets even worse. Yes, okay. yes. And yeah. the opinions. Another yeah. thing is the opinions, Phil. Opinions. Memorizing, and I always tell the candidates, you don't have to memorize. You just need to understand when do you issue a regular qualif- a unqualified versus qualified opinion versus disclaimer versus going. That's what you need to remember. You don't have to, like we were, we took it, Phil, we had to memorize the whole audit report. That's right. right. I remember that. because All we the paragraphs, it. okay? These days, you don't have to. And also, uh, what would you do? You have uh, two weeks left. You have 10 days left before you go in there, all right? What would you do? Would you do a lot more multiple choice? Would you do something else? I'll tell you what my strategy would be. What would be yours? I would, you know, if you're in the Jaeger materials, I'd do the cram, okay? Just to do a final assessment, I always tell people I speak coming to the end, you know, take the cram, see how, see how you do. And let's identify maybe a few major areas where you're still not comfortable, or you're not in the 70s or above, okay, or you're below 60, let's say. Let's identify those areas and let's then uh, spend the time to get you up. And by yeah. the way, don't do tons of multiple choice. No. All right? no because no. the questions that are on there now are at higher level critical thinking. Yes. You have to know the concept. Listen to yes. Mike Decker on our podcast. You know, you want to know where the podcast is? Just go to our CPA review and other, okay? That's the name of our podcast. All right, two weeks ago, Mike Decker, listen to it. It's good information. Now, I know we have questions. I don't know, uh, uh, Rob, is Rob going to give us those questions? All right, so the first question, I have taken reg and FAR and have failed both of them. I'll be retaking regulation on October 18th and plan to retake FAR on November 25th. Mm -hmm. Depending on if it is available, 
that day my testing center is taking five to six weeks for each section, a good amount of time to restudy the material. I am currently using Wiley as my review. Well, I hate to knock a competitor, but Wiley doesn't have the blueprints integrated. So therefore, you know, if you fail, yep. it's not your fault if they don't have the blueprints integrated with the notes. All right. Hey, if they just give you a copy of the blueprints, what good is that? Are you supposed to go to their books and pull out all the information under a specific blueprint? You might as well write your own books, all right? So that's one thing. You might not be doing well because you're not following the blueprints. God, I don't know how many times I have to say this, Ron. All yes. right? I, I, I try, you know what? At this, I think the blueprints have been in effect about three years, and I guess people get sick of me saying that, but you got to follow them. You want to tell them, say that. You can tell them. Yeah. I mean, Phil, I'm typing it here in the Zoom chat, okay? How important it is to go through the blueprints, okay? It'll actually make you feel better in some cases that you know a lot more than you think, okay? And more importantly, Phil, it'll point out where you focus, okay? Now, the person who just called about, uh, they took the reg and the financial, I think they failed, all right? Hey, uh, just, you'll get an email. Contact me, uh, you know, set up an appointment. I'll talk to you about uh, what's going wrong? I, you know, if I can look at your diagnostic or you can tell me about it, it would be a lot easier to really analyze it. Okay. Uh, yeah. What was it? What, what did the question exactly say? The last question? He said he's taking uh, reg. They're taking regulation. Let me. For the first time? Back up. Regulation and FAR. They build both. Uh, within how they're long taking, a period? So they're retaking regulation on October 18th. Right. And far, they're retaking in November. I believe they said on the 12th, if it's available at their testing. Wow, that's very good. Cool. six to eight weeks yeah. of a uh, study well, sufficient to restudy we those topics. Yeah, we don't know what grade they got. And also, we don't know what areas they were weaker on. And that could give us an idea. And the question is, they're going in October 18th for reg, November 12th for financial. I hope they have a real good background now studying the reg. Because, you know, you're going right to financial. I hope you studied a lot in financial. Reg is about three months. Financial is about three months. So, you know, this is not a race. Just remember that. It's not a race. Uh, maybe, maybe you're doing November 12th because you work in public accounting and you won't have any time otherwise. But uh, I would like this person, whoever they are, to get on my calendar. Contact me and I'll call you. All right. And uh, we'll talk about this. Hey. I'm not gonna I will email them a direct link to your calendar for you as well. Sounds this good. came into my email for you. All right. Do we have another question? Here's one, Phil. Does, does Becker, once the, one candidate asks, does Becker have the blueprints built into their review course? And the answer is no. I spoke to the girl tonight from, uh, she was from Illinois. Uh, she went to Southern Illinois University anyway. Oh, she was complaining to me. She says she wants a tuition back of $50,000 because the teachers she had were terrible. All right. So I said, well, we don't handle that. You know, we're not, we're not refund experts on the university. But yeah. anyway, uh, she's using Becker and she says, no, there's no blueprints integrated. They mention them. All right. But there's no blueprints. It's just mentioned. That's good. Uh, no, they don't, they don't integrate it. In fact, I think we're the only course that does it. All right. And I think I can stand by that comment. All right. Uh, and by the way, I'm not saying that because I do CPA review, okay? I'm saying that because it bothers me. I always say on my podcast, I am Phil Yeager, the advocate for the students. And I always say, hey, if you don't have a course that integrates the blueprints, integrates them, all right? Then you gotta think something about that course, all right? But no, they do not, all right? Next question. Phil, next question. After FARS and auditing, what do you recommend as the order from the other? What do you think, Ron? You know, I'm 50-50, Phil, on both, but you have a lot more. Well, I would say to take the reg and then the BEC. Yeah. Because the BEC has the written communications, right? The SS? Yes, yes. And they can be on uh, FAR auditing a reg. Yes. Correct? Yeah. So Correct. So if they take B before reg and they have a question, a written communication on reg, they may have problems. So I would do the yep. reg first, about three months, BEC to two and a half months. And once again, it's not a reg, all right? Yeah. Do you think they should do before reg, Ron? No, I, I agree with what you say there. I'm, you know, I think I'm 50-50. I think, you know, if you feel like your writing skills are not very good, perhaps you should wait a little bit, okay, on BEC, because that's going to be a couple of the sims, right, which may be the difference between passing and not passing, right, on yeah. BEC. So maybe you need to do a little bit more on your writing skills and make sure you're well-organized for that. 
but um, you know, I, yeah, I bet, yeah. you know, I, th I think, I think what you said, Phil, I basically agree. Mike Decker from the SCPA on the podcast, from what I remember, uh, he said to me that I asked him about the written communication and he said, they don't grade necessarily on the content so much. Okay. That, that they're really grading you on uh, writing sentences, uh, uh, sentence structure, that type of thing. All right. Now I thought they are testing on content. All right. But you know, you got to listen to that again. I think, because I asked him about that. I said, what are you testing on BEC as far as the communication? Is it content? And he says, no, I, I guess if you more or less have the content down, but not completely right, they'll give you credit. But I get the idea that if you completely mess it up, in other words, if they ask you to talk about individual taxes and you talk about corporate taxes, I think that could hurt you on the region. Yeah. Phil, here's another question. I have taken and failed three of the four parts. I've scheduled FARS for November. I work tax accounting. I'm really busy, right? Taxing to April. Do you have any suggestion on when I should schedule audit? This candidate is using our program. It's focused. Okay. Um, they failed the first three parts. Uh, yeah, they've taken and failed three of the four parts before. Now, okay. what this person needs to do is get one part done and yes. get it. And now we'll give them the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's like getting a hit, a batter, yeah. a slump. They get a hit, they're out of the slump. You yes. Get one part done. Now, if they work in a CPA firm and they are doing taxes or they're doing auditing, all right, then is that what they're saying? Uh, he yes. Said, what's his question exactly? Well, right now they're, they're, they're studying right now for FARS. Tax season is coming. Any suggestion when they start to study for auditing? Uh, when's he taking FAR? Uh, November 13th. November 13th. Yes. Uh, you want to give it, uh, well, uh, I don't know when his busy season would start. In the middle of January, you'd have to tell February me. February to April, the candidate. February said. to April? Yes. I would take auditing. I would, is this the first time? He's, take, he's taken auditing before. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how long he studied, but figure two to two and a half months, I would say, oh, the last week in January? What do you Yeah, think? I agree. I agree. I think right after they finish, this candidate finishes FARS on November 13th, they should start a week later, start on auditing, right? And take it at the end of January and before maybe, the busy they, season starts. Yeah, if they work on the auditing staff, that helps to some extent. Yeah, but they're a tax person. So oh, they're tax? Yes, they're ta they're they work tax, in the tax they department. They should take regulation after financial, all right? Okay. They don't win. That's the whole thing. If you need you a win, taxes, yes. All right, yep. this part for you will be the regulation, and you can go out of order. You can take regulation even first, all right? But if you're doing FAR, get it out of the way and then start studying regulation and study as much as you can and make sure you do the cram. That's another thing. You got to do the cram. Yeah. And once again, I would like this person to get on my calendar and yes. contact me. And let me let me speak to them. OK, yep. here's another one, Phil. I've, I've used this candidate says I've used surgeon for, for BC. And I just can I purchase the Jaeger supplemental question without having to purchase the entire course? I passed auditing and reg. And I need to finish BE and FARS within the next month to become a partner. Wow, it's a lot of wow. pressure, huh? Big pressure, yes. Uh, well, getting more questions is not going to do anything, and I'll tell you why. Great. Uh, we all, all the providers, theoretically, uh, we pay a royalty for the use of the ICPA question. So yeah. we should have all the same questions. So then the question, all right. So this person has. When until, when's he going to lose these? Within the next month, they have to pass. Uh, they need to finish BEC and FAR within the next month. My partner. In their well, partner. I don't know. Is this the first time they're taking BEC and FAR? I think probably it's not descriptive enough. Perhaps they're in the deadline period, right? That they've passed two already. And all right. In the uh, period that they have to pass them. The all right. Uh, well, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to talk to this person uh, yes. this pretty quick. Um, yes. So yeah. you should contact Phil directly on this. All right. Yeah, question. contact me. Uh, call call my call the office. I'll give you the number. Talk to Sonny. All right. And the number there in Maryland is 301-874-4900. And actually, if you press extension five, you'll get through to me. All right. That's 301-874-4900. Call me tomorrow and tell me you're that person. All right. I'll remember it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Another question, Phil. I've already scheduled to sit for BC early December. I'm also going to take FARS in March. Is two months a good enough time after that to study and pass BC? Uh, well, two wait, months after BC, that. And then he's taking FAR? So they're taking BC in December, early December. Then they're going to study and take FAR in March. Uh, is then two months, 
you know, is two months enough time then to study in your opinion pass B? Uh, yeah, but too much time. Is this person assuming they're going to fail the BEC? Um, that that's what they're saying. Yeah. Saying well, like, I don't think failing. I think what they're saying is they're starting now, right? So no, oh, 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 October, November. Enough, the answer, yeah. Yes. Yes, I as think long so. You study with the blueprints. Okay. Yes. All yes. right. You're only as good as the material you have. Just remember that. All right. So yeah, two months is enough. Uh, and make sure you put in the hours. Yeah. And also, you should have enough time to do the financial. Yes. But I'll say it over and over, Ron. The blueprints. See, the problem is they're taking courses that don't really cover the blueprints. Yeah. All right. That's right. They just that's don't. Right. Yeah. And that's you know, the problem. when I tell that to people, you know, they say, "Oh, you know, you're a competitor. Of course you can." Yeah. No, I. You know, after doing this for 42 years, all right. Really, I do this now. I mean, it may be hard to believe, but I actually do this to help the students, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, people wonder, why are you in this after? And I say, because honestly, uh, I don't think there's anybody out there, besides, of course, you, Ron, all right? I don't think there's anybody else out there that cares about the people as much as we do, all yeah, right? And yeah. God, if there's no one out there, uh, I'm not leaving. I can't, I can't stay in this forever, but, you know, yeah. as long as I can breathe yeah. and speak, which yeah. I never stop doing, all right? I will, you know, help the students, you know, yep. I, because what's the greatest thing that you hear from Ron when a student passes? What do they say? I, I tell you, Phil, there's nothing better than an email from a candidate saying that they've passed the exam. There's nothing yeah, in our that, business better. Okay. And of course, Ron would like a gift, but you know, he's pretty good. He's happy. No, for me, the gift, Phil, is I passed the exam and I'm, I'm moving to the I'm next kidding. part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Hey, Phil, another question. When do you recommend starting the cram review for FAR before taking? The I would recommend about uh, two weeks yep, before. Yeah, agree. Yep. And then as you're watching the cram, write down the areas. I think we discussed this. Write down as you're watching cram the areas you feel you're strong on, yep. write the areas you're weaker on. And then after you finish that, all right, depending upon what the subject is, all right, if it's auditing, all right, we'll put you in touch with Ron. If it's uh, financial, I can yep. help you. Reg, all right, but auditing BEC, I'll put you in touch with Ron and you'll discuss with him the weaker areas and what to do, all right, before you go in. But allow about 15 days, don't rush yourself, all right? This is a good, you know, if you do it right, the cram will add five to 10 points to your score. That's us, I know that's the actual statistic, all right? Yep. That was what we had when we did the live course and I could talk to everybody, but we haven't changed them. The only thing we've done is we put it on videotape instead of I'm standing up and teaching with the other instructors. So yep. I was there's, an, there's another great question, Phil. I've been using Wiley. I've taken three of the four exams and I failed multiple times, but I'm within 10 points of passing the last few times I've taken the parts of the exam. What would you suggest to supplement the Wiley material? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would like that. That's one. a loaded question. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> Well, Wiley's not using any crams. I can well exactly. Wiley's not using any blueprints, okay? Yes. yes. So, you know, I would push our crams. I really would. Yeah. I would say, you know what? Buy one cram for a part. All right. Yeah. Watch it. Get your weak areas. Okay. Also, buy the book, because the cram follows the book. I go through the book when I'm doing the cram. All right. But after you go through the cram, we'll do the same thing again. I even though you just bought the cram. You'll call us, depending upon what the part is. All right. If it's Ron's part, get in touch with Ron. But take care. Write down your weak areas. Write down your strong areas. And we'll go over the weak areas. And by the way, our cram follows the blueprints where Wiley does not. All right. So yeah. that will give you an idea. By the way, you'll have the book. You can buy the book from us. Okay. And it's unfortunate. I was told it was $65. But the blueprints. $65 in. per book. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, you know, you'll have books with the blueprints. You'll see what the. Yeah. Okay. Phil, what's your number again? I have some candidates um, texting me asking for your number again. Okay. Uh, my number is uh, 301. Yep. 874. Yes. 4900. Yep. Extension 5. Okay. Got it. And remember, I'm on the East Coast. All right. Yep. And yep. Be, you, know, uh, you know, if you, I mean, you're welcome to call me. If I, for some reason, I have another call because I do have a calendar. But, you know, if I can talk to you, I'll talk to you. All right. And, you know, the best day actually is, it's, I find it easier talking to people on Saturdays or Sundays, believe it or not, because yeah. I don't get a tons of people calling me on that day. So, you know, if you want to call me, I can set up a time with you, all right, on the phone. I'd be happy to talk to you, okay? Yes. Next. We hit all the questions? 
Um, when will you shoot out your calendar to us so that we can book uh, you? Uh, Rob, when we shoot I will be. I will be adding that to the comments on Facebook or the Facebook Live and anyone on the webinar. We have your email. I will have an email blast go out to everybody who is registered to this webinar. And if you don't get one, just call us on the phone number, my office, okay? All you right. can also email directly to podcast at com. If you did not receive an email by tomorrow morning, um, again, that's podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T at com. And Ron, Ron, Rob, who you just heard, <laughs> he's executive producer and director of the podcast, part of it, all right? Yeah. Another question, Phil. Right now, I'm using Surgeon. Do they follow the blueprint? The answer is no. Oh. <laughs> you know, I did a comparison on a website of the different courses. You know, it's not on there anymore. I don't think it's on. But we put Surgeon as the blueprint, all right? Yeah. They called us up. I said, that's not true, all right? We use the blueprints. They're integrated. Well, this is what they do, all right? They have the blueprints, from what I understand. Then they took the old released multiple choice question, all right? And they tried to put some multiple choice under each blueprint that applies to them. That's yeah. not integrating notes, okay? So if you want to really say in all actuality, from what I understand, talking to students, that's all I, I can do. I'm not going to go buy everyone's course, but from talking to students who call me, and they do call me, they don't integrate it. No one wants, you know, integrating it was rewriting all the books. But we saw, we were very lucky, all right? We found out about the blueprints, and then we said, we're going to write our own books. So we actually were able to get the blueprints, and based on that, we were able to write our own books based on the blueprints. We integrated it. Very, but now, you know, these other courses, they would have to rewrite everything, all right? Now, maybe eventually they will, but, you know, it's a, it's a real task. Let me tell you, it's a real task. So the answer is no, Surgeon does not integrate it, all right? But you know what? Call them up. Get a Get a sample of the books, all right? That's what you want to see, you know? Don't, let, you know, don't call them up and say, do you integrate the blueprints? They're going to say yes, all right? But I'll tell you another thing about these other courses. You will get, try to get support from them, okay? This young lady told me she called up the Becker support, all right? And first of all, it took a half hour to get to talk to anybody. And then the person said, I'll call you back. They never called her back. And these are not people teaching the course, okay? All right? So that's another thing. You don't get support from most of these courses. All right. You really don't. I don't care what they tell you. And also don't fall for the unlimited use for the rest of your life. Because yeah. I promise you, if you use a course three times and you don't pass, you're either going to quit or buy another course. So who cares if they say you can have this for the rest of your life? First of all, all right, you're not going to want to look at it after, for the rest of your life. All right. You'll be crazy because nothing changes. If you fail with a course, all right, go back and study with them a second time. The books, they're the same as they were the first time. So if they didn't help you the first time, they're not going to help you the second time, all right? And if you don't pass the second time, they're not going to help you the third time. Be realistic. I know it costs money to maybe get something else, but you know what? Whatever it costs, it's an investment, all right? It really is. Uh, you know, we all spent money. I spend money for my CPA. Ron spent oh, money. Oh, yes. And I did the same thing. I was originally a certified financial planner. I purchased so many books from the College of Financial Planning because I looked at it this way, all right? Not that I'm like, you know, I was rolling in the bucks. I just said, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to get that certification because it pays off many, 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 many times, okay? Next yeah. question. Next question is, can you explain, Phil, the difference between the Jaeger course with the blueprints and the other review courses without the blueprints by showing examples? In other words, when you look at our materials, and you see how they're aligned to the blueprints and the examples are then also aligned to the blueprints. How can you explain why that's different from the other I review think, courses? I think we have samples of our, you know, call up. How does it? All right. I'll tell you how it does. All right. First of all, we start with the first blueprint. Okay. Whatever it says. Okay. Yeah. I think it talks about in financial accounting, discuss the conceptual framework. Okay. Then we discuss that there's more detailed with the tests. But then we explain what the conceptual framework is. And then we try to do some multiple choice. We teach the material, okay? So all the blueprints are there. And like, for example, all right, discuss uh, long-term liabilities affecting uh, issuance of bonds, okay? All right, well, what we do is we go over with you. First of all, how to calculate a bond from the issuer standpoint, all right? We show you all the journal entries from the issuer standpoint with the bond. These are all what the blueprints are asking for. 
All right, now what about the courses that don't? The courses that don't are still filing the old content specification, all right, which means they discuss every topic, inventory, all right, but they don't necessarily, hey, they could be going over stuff from the old days that's no longer on the exam because what's on the exam now is the blueprints. So if you want to buy a course that has the old content specification without the integration of blueprints, you're going to have to take the print off blueprints, go to the Wiley or book, whatever it is. And I'll say, Oh, let me find that material and see if it's still on. All right. Do you realize how long that would take you? All right. So we really do. In now, if you call the office, I think Sonny, uh, once again, his number is 301-874-4900. 301-874-4900. Sonny, I believe we give you use of the, you know, a subject for a period of time. Then you can see how it works. Okay. Ask him if he gives you some use. Uh, if there's any problem with that, just contact me. Okay. Yeah. I don't want you to buy something. And, and Phil, our, another question is, are our materials organized in the same order as the blueprints? Uh, yeah. Because yes. we follow the areas. Yes. All right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. For example, in regulation, area one is professional responsibilities. So I have every blueprint from professional. That's the first area in the blueprints. I put the areas, I just I say the topic and I discuss everything you need to know about that topic. And I'll tell you, that took a lot of research, all right? Because you had to make sure you covered every topic under a blueprint. And it took us probably two, two and a half years to write these books and to get them, you know, it's always, you find mistakes here and there. But now I would say these are, you know, someone told me they just bought the financial accounting book last time. All right. They didn't buy the course, just the book. They called me up and they thanked me. They said, that was the best book I ever saw. I read the blueprint. I did the information. I read the books and I was able to pass financial accounting. And I'm not encouraging that, but you know, that's what worked. Yep. Phil, here's another question. Ironically, I have passed reg and auditing two times and I've had to retake them because I lost them, right? They, they ran past the period to pass the, I believe I'm studying incorrectly. I've been in public accounting for 10 years. So of course I know my stuff, but I'm just studying incorrectly. I'm the person who has the partnership opportunity the exams. I will lose okay. auditing in March if I, if I can't pass auditing. You know, I, I, I can remember, it's probably 20 years ago at least, where we had the live cram. And there was a gentleman, we, we ran in Washington, D.C. area. And this uh, guy came in from a firm from New York City. And he had to pass one part. And if he didn't pass that part, they wouldn't give him the partnership. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he told me that when he first came in. I didn't know who he was. I've never met him. And, you know, God, I, I felt this pressure when I was teaching the part that he had to know, you know. And, uh, you know, he said to me, well, I'll let you know what happened. Well, I'd say six months went by after the grades came out. I didn't hear from him. Then I get a gift in the mail, okay? What do I get? I get a dozen bagels from New York City, all right, from a famous bagel place, all right, with cream cheese and lox, just salmon, okay? All right. It comes in with, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's cold and there's a note in there. Phil, this is so-and-so. Remember, I had the one part. Call me. All right. And then he says, enjoy the bagels from New York. They have good bagels in New York. I'm from New York. All right. It's the water, the waters. But anyway, Absolutely. no, that's, hey, he became partner. And we've had that before. I had one guy who was taking another course and uh, he needed to pass his part or else he wouldn't get manager. You know, but that's happened before. But I, I urge this person to please. Yep. Next one, Phil, is do we offer a demonstration of our remo review materials to candidates so they can? Uh, well, we'll give them use of it, I believe. All right. Just call Sonny. He'll give you use of something. All yep. right. And then you can see what it's like. Yes. We're not going to. It's not a bait and switch. You know, it's, yep. it's what yeah, they get. They get a, a nice free view of it. Take a look of at course. it. See I'm if it's sure. suited. Yeah. And yes. listen, call Sonny. And his number is in. New Jersey. His number is in Maryland, 301. I feel like I memorized this number. 874-4900. Extension 6. Sonny. Sonny's, nice, Sonny's been with me for 13, 14. Yeah, he's fabulous. Uh, yeah. Another, another question, Phil. When doing multiple choice questions, do you recommend doing those questions based on certain topics or should the students do the questions at random? I recommend this. Okay, for our students. All right. I tell them, Start with the first video of a subject. It's financial. Start with the first video of financial. All right. Do exactly what the instructor tells you on the video. The instructor will pick certain questions, you know, like uh, after they cover a subject, if there's a question. Okay. All right. Now, when they finish with the entire area of a blue, we have all the remaining multiple choice 
that deals with those areas where we didn't have time to do the multiple choice with you, all right? And then I tell them to do all the multiple choice within that area. Now, the problem is this. There's some of the subjects that are basically brand new and there were no questions on them, like leases. You know, leases is one that comes to mind. Leases changed and there were really no questions in the past on those. So we had to take the old leases, those capital and we had to convert those so, and make them adaptive to the new lease rules, all right? So those questions, you know, and once again, uh, that was a real nightmare, I have to tell you that, because no matter how many times you change things, you might miss something, all right? And it took a while to get those things absolutely correct, they're absolutely correct, but not all the areas. The SCPA's questions are from the old exams. They may not have new questions from the new topics that introduced since they had the content specification. I don't know if that answered that question, did it? Yep, yep, definitely, okay. yep. Well, uh, it's almost, is there anything else? Did we hit them all? I think it's the last right. question, Phil. Yes. With auditing, I seem to struggle the most with audit procedure, and that's one I get all the time. I currently work in finance. I have no accounting, so it's hard for me to understand. Do you have any advice for... That's yours, Ron. Yeah, and I think, Phil... What I try to do with candidates that have this similar question is put it into a real world concept. So if you work in finance, I would bring, I would ask you, what do you do in finance? And I'd say, well, an auditor's in there today and they're wondering, um, have you reconciled the bank? Why is it important? To, well, all right, that's internal controls. That's um, critical audit area. If that's a big part of the balance sheet, I try to put it, fill into a, a work con work context who I'm speaking. So that then you say to yourself, oh, sense. that's why an auditor would want to look at that. Or if you're in finance and involved in securities, when you want to confirm the existence of those securities with the third party holding those securities, someone in finance would say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. You know, that's my job, right? Is to report on the investments for our, of course, an auditor would want to confirm them. So that's the advice I have for this. Yeah. Panel. And you know, something's interesting. They've been asking bank recs and financial accounting is simulation. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, uh, and you know what? Uh, someone said, I had trouble doing that because I do my bank rec. Uh, the bank sends me something with a form in the back to fill out how to do it. Yes, yeah. It's not the same as the one on the exam, obviously, because they're giving you a form. I don't know if they, but the banks uh, give yep. you where it's just put the numbers in place. And if it yes. equals, no, they expect you to know what items reckon the yeah. balance for bank, balance for that type of, so yep. anyway. But Another it, one, Phil, one more. I'm studying for FARS, but I have no experience. What advice would you give me? I would say that really you don't need practical experience. First of all, the exam, all professional exams are purely academic, right? Yes. I mean, practical, need practical, all right? You study financial accounting subjects, okay? And once again, the blueprint spell out what you have to know. In finance. It's basically your intermediate account, your advanced accounting, okay? Now, if you didn't have advanced, it's probably... Well, it's not the worst thing in the world. That's business combinations. And we teach this stuff, so it makes no difference whether you had it or not. Yeah, if you had it, it would help. Also, governmental and not-for-profit. A lot of people don't have that. So we have to explain that to them. And by the way, there's always 20 multiple choice on governmental and not-for-profit. Usually yeah. 17, and now it could change. 17 on governmental, three on not-for-profit, okay? But no, you can still pass financial. It's an academic exam. Exactly. It means that, you just have to be able to take a test, and that's it. And study. You got to study. Ron, uh, we're going to cut it off now, okay? And I just want to thank you as usual. Uh, we are the team of Ron and Phil, okay? Great, great questions today, Phil. I think we got from these candidates. Yeah, and once again, we really hope in your endeavors of studying that you are successful and uh, follow the blueprints. That's and we want fun. you to pass. That That is our number one yeah, goal. Yeah, I, I don't really want you to take a course like Wiley and say, oh, I, I failed. And I say, oh, I'm so happy for you. No, no. Hey, if you pass with them, great. All right? Yes. If no matter how you pass, we pass. Yeah. And if you don't pass, it's not necessarily your fault. Maybe you just had the wrong, you know, for you. Yeah. But you can pass the exam, Phil, even if you failed parts or you're taking them. By the way, we enjoy this tremendously. Yes. We appreciate. And we're going to do We do this once every month. Okay. Yes. And if there's a specific area you want us to talk about, we'll talk about it. You know, yeah. Ron and I are lonely people. We have nothing to do. Yeah, but know. please, oh, Phil. but please call Phil, or you can schedule me. And if you have questions or you want to talk about strategy on passing them, we would love to speak. 
All right, and I'm going to just turn it over to Rob Medford. Once again, I'd like to thank you for being the best part of CPA Review and more with your host, Phil Yeager. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear on the show, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show to share your story, we want to hear from you. Send me an email to the studio at podcast at com. If you're enjoying the content that we're providing, we'd greatly appreciate it if you'd submit a review to the Apple iTunes podcast app to let us know how we're doing. If you're in the market for a CPA review course or simply want to find out more about the CPA exam and what Jaeger has to offer, check out JaegerCPAReview.com or call our office and we'll answer any questions you may have. The link and the phone number will be in the description of this podcast. Here at Team Jaeger, we're excited to tell you about our new Jaeger CPA Review subscription format. It's the same great Jaeger CPA Review course that you know and love on an all-new, month-to-month, no-commitment subscription format. Check it out today. Once again, my name's Rob Medford. I'm your executive producer and director here at the Jaeger Studios. And until next time, take care and be audit you can be.